All right, oil prices regaining strength today with crude oil up, as you can see here, up $4, a gain of more than 4%. And it's 102 and change. It was in the 104 earlier uh, range uh, just a couple of hours ago. Uh, again, we were below $100 a barrel earlier in the week. That's the first time we've been below $100 since May. Energy markets have been on a seesaw first, soaring due to the war in Ukraine and now coming off those highs due to fears of a looming recession. Now, today's EIA report not dampening prices. Crude oil stockpiles rose by 8.2 million barrels for the week ending July 1st. Let's bring in Liberty Oilfield Services Chairman and CEO Chris Wright. And Chris, it's great to have you here. First, I want to ask you just about the volatility we're seeing in the oil market. Yes, Cheryl, there's big uncertainty about what's going to happen with the economy, what's going to happen with demand for oil and gas with these high prices. So markets are tight. I think oil prices and gasoline and diesel prices stay elevated, uh, with barring some large uh, disruption to the world economy. Markets are tight. So let me ask you about gasoline prices then, because I was looking, you know, obviously we track these every day. The, the 475 is where we're sitting today uh, for an average uh, gallon of gas. That's been falling over the last week or so. Do you think that's a trend that's going to continue? It might, but probably not. You know, I think we've had a little bit of a pullback in demand from what was expected, and uh, that's probably due to the high gasoline prices. And the little shrinkage of demand at the margin, you know, gave some breathing space and stopped gasoline prices from rising and has actually pulled back a little bit. I doubt they pull back much from here because the U.S. is still short refining capacity. With gasoline and diesel, it's two problems. It's refining capacity and higher oil prices. And, and demand, and we're in the middle of the summer driving season. Uh, okay, let's talk about the SPR. Uh, President Biden, uh, there's a million barrels a day that's getting released out of the SPR. President Biden's going to do that through October. But there are reports, were reports that came out this morning, that some of the oil from the SPR is actually being sent overseas to Europe, to Asia. You're someone that dr is drilling here in the United States. This is your business. Can you believe what the president is doing? Were you surprised to hear this news? Well, look, the, the U.S. today exports about seven or eight million barrels a day of oil and refined products, and we import almost as much, six or seven million barrels a day, because our refineries were built for a certain kind of oil and not necessarily for the kind we're producing today from shale. So there's a lot of, we export oil that's better for foreign refineries, we import oil that's better for our refineries. But do I think drawing oil from the SPR is a good idea today? No, because we're not its strategic petroleum reserve for a crisis or interruption of supply. We don't have that today. We may have that if Russia tries to, if Russia decides to amp up the, this sort of war of wits right now. But today, we just have a tighter market. The answer for that is more production and more refining capacity, not draining of strategic reserves. Okay, so you think we're going to have more refining in this country, not less? Because I was going to ask you what that, how that would affect your business. Well, we need more refining capacity in this U.S., but I'm, I'm not that optimistic we'll get more refining capacity built. That's a multi-year, multi-billion dollar investment, and we don't have the investment climate in this country to do that today. At a minimum, we should have waivers on the Jones Act so we can move oil to the coast from the front. We, we can move oil from Houston and Louisiana to the coast easier. And we should have relaxation of blending requirements so we can increase the throughput through our refineries. All of these things could be done with a stroke of the pen, but this administration has chose to do nothing to increase the available supply of gasoline. Do you have we, any we hope, but Chris, do, do you have any hope, any hope? that there's going to be a, a change in Washington. And I say this from the political side because the midterms are coming. President Biden sees his polling numbers. He knows that he's getting hit on gas prices. He's trying to do something. Obviously, this SPR plan is not really working out. You can't tell me that the 10 cents a gallon uh, from a month ago is, is going to help the average driver who's, who's suffering under all of this. So do you think that we are going to see a meaningful change in tone from Washington between now and November? No, I don't think so. You know, I may have had a sliver of hope a few months ago, but a lot of reasonable ideas have been floated and none of them have been bought on by this administration. So no, I have no hope of any sobriety returning to energy policy before November. 
maybe after November, maybe a message is sent, maybe some sobriety returns. I sure hope so. American consumers and American producers I need a break on energy prices. And right now, the pressure is all the other way. The dominant pressure is still all in the upward direction. Yeah, and history tells us, Chris, that, that, that voters look at who is in power at that moment, and that's where they tend to put the blame in all of this. Chris Wright. Chris, thank you very much. It's great to have you on the show. It's a big topic that impacts everybody watching this show uh, right now.